Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. So, Google is pretty much embedded in all of our lives. Through search, email, web browsing, storing files and photos, locating ourselves on maps, or even using a phone, Google has its fingers in all the aspects of our lives. I've grown more and more conscious about that over the last year, and I'd like to try something. De-Googling most of my life. I'm obviously aware of the irony of doing that video series on YouTube, very much a Google-owned website. But I don't want to entirely remove Google from my life, I just want to limit what it knows about me and try to diversify the service providers I use. I already replaced Google Search with DuckDuckGo a while ago and I'm very satisfied with it. I even find its image search tool miles ahead of Google's. For web browsing, I ditched Chrome about a year ago for Firefox and sometimes Epiphany and I probably won't look back. So in this video series, I'll try and find alternatives to these popular Google services with a few conditions. They must be free, as their Google equivalents, they must be mindful of privacy and avoid data collection, and they must not use Google technology such as Blink. So let's start with web browsing. Web browsers. If you follow the channel, you'll know there are quite a few browsers available on Linux, but almost every one of them runs on Blink, Google's engine. Contributing to the hegemony of a single engine is obviously a choice I do want to avoid, so choices are much reduced. In the end, the only credible choice out there with a strong engine is Firefox. It's free, it's open source, it renders web pages fast, and while it's not exactly lightweight, it's a bit less RAM hungry than Chrome. It supports account sync, a ton of extensions, and while it collects some technical data by default, you can turn that off in the settings. Firefox is, in my opinion, the obvious choice for privacy-conscious Linux users. By using Firefox, you won't deprive yourself of any feature that Chrome has, and it's a relatively painless transition. Web Search Google Search is huge and efficient. Its results are often on point, and it offers cards and info to help you get what you're looking for without opening any web page. I could find two alternatives that match my criteria, namely DuckDuckGo and Quant. DuckDuckGo is the one I use right now. It's reliable and search results are good. It also adds cards to display relevant information from Wikipedia, as well as video miniatures and mini maps when you're looking for an address. These maps are powered by Apple Maps, which is an odd choice, but since Apple is pretty much the only major hardware and services company that doesn't sell any user data to anyone, it's not that ridiculous. You can set another provider for itineraries, choosing from Apple Maps, OSM, here, Google, or Bing Maps if you find the default results are not to your liking. It has powerful image search tools though, with the ability to filter through type of image, including images which have a transparent background, as well as colors. It lacks the ability to specify an exact image size, and it also lacks filters to look for images based on their licenses and rights. DuckDuckGo also has a video and news filter, and can display contextual filters as well. For example, looking up Bitcoin will add a currency converter to check out how much one Bitcoin is worth. It's just weird that DuckDuckGo doesn't add that one in the default web search and that you have to click on the currency filter. Looks-wise, DuckDuckGo looks kinda bland. I know it's a search engine and we don't really care how it looks, but I find the duck icon a bit cheesy and the grey and orange colors a bit dull. You can change the theme though, with a few options including a dark mode. If you really want to go further, you can change the font used, the colors of the various links, and even select to show or hide site icons in the results. If you want to save these configurations, you can do so by typing a passphrase that will allow you to download them on other devices without using an account and giving away your email address. Quant Quant, on the other hand, is less well known. It's basically trying to give services to match Google's, but in keeping with the EU regulations and with a privacy-focused mind. And they don't give any usage or search data either. They also pride themselves to apply no censure or filtering in what they display, so there was no filter bubble effect, as they call it. Quant aggregates data classified as news, social feeds, and regular old links on the same results page and they obviously allow you to filter through news, social, images, videos, and shopping. Their image search tools are great, combining the best filters from Google and DuckDuckGo. Quant looks very colorful and bright, which I like, even though it can get distracting sometimes. 
While DuckDuckGo does not implement user accounts, Quan does. And these allow you to share your settings through devices, as well as adding favorites and managing notebooks that you can share with other people. But an account is in no way required, just like you don't need a Google account to use Google Search. Quant also has a dark mode, and has a few spin-offs, such as Quant Junior, for safer search results for kids, Quant Music, which focuses on the musical side of the world with top charts and artists, and Quant Lite, which simplifies the user interface a lot and makes it look a lot more like Google. I enjoyed using Quant, which you can set as your default browser in Firefox, and I might very well switch to it full-time. In the end, getting away from Google search was easier than I thought. Whether you're more into DuckDuckGo or Quant, it's mainly a matter of aesthetics, because features are similar across the board, and even though results aren't exactly similar to Google search, I never felt like I was getting coherent web pages or useless results. It's important to know that Quant has its own indexation engine, and only uses some of Bing's results to complete searches where it doesn't have anything relevant to show. DuckDuckGo, on the other hand, is a meta-engine, and as such, uses results from its own engine, but also adds some reference websites, and also results from Bing, Yandex, Yelp, and Yahoo. Quant is not globally available yet, though, so you might not be able to access it depending on where you live. Moving away from Google on the web side of things is pretty easy. Replace Chrome with Firefox, and Google Search with DuckDuckGo or Quant, and you're all set. I hope you guys enjoyed this first part of the series and stay tuned for the next ones, in which I'll talk about replacing Gmail, Google Photos, Google Drive, Google Maps, and maybe even alternatives to YouTube as well. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!